All right, well, should be back. Should be back in an audio. <clears throat> so what I want to do is do, if this tile is none, and the tile above is static, Nice, yay! Well, <laughs> looks like I was talking to myself there for a while, answering all your quest your questions, getting all passionate about my answers. Okay, um, why isn't it doing it right this time? Now it's doing some rubble. But it's not in the right places. It's so weird. Let's set the opacity on this thing to 128 so we can partially see it. Nice. Uh, all right, cool. I'm glad I don't have to repeat myself. Oh, man. Yeah, this is the long answer I gave. All right. Um, why am I not using Unity, Game Maker, Unreal, Construct, any of the other software based game engines? First of all, I don't like software-based game engines because typically you don't have access to the source code. Unity and Unreal have changed that recently so you can actually go and edit the source code for Unreal or Unity or whatever and change your own stuff, but that's probably a rare individual that's ever going to do that, um, in my opinion. So, But anyways, when I started my game, Unreal and, Un and Unity weren't even doing that. Um, so I'm a tinkerer. I love to go and change my game engine in certain ways. I love to be able to be able to just if I need to. The, the thought of using game development software freaks me out because I can't I can't go change it if there's something something wrong with their code because I'm primarily a programmer. I've been a programmer for the longest period of of time. So um so that's why I use an open source game engine like Coco Studio X and it's Coco Studio X also is a do it yourself kind of game engine so. I'm a do-it-yourself kind of guy, so that's why I really love it. And also, it's cross-platform. And also, I'm very used to it already. I'm very familiar. And when you first start a game engine, you're going to be very unfamiliar with it. It's going to take you forever to do little things. Like if you if you're not familiar with Construct or whatever, or, or any one of these game engines, it can take you a whole day just to do something really simple. And so I'm already really, really familiar with Coco Studio X. I can fly. I can do things really, really fast. And I only have four months left until my Kickstarter money runs out with this game. So I've got a, I got to haul ass as fast as I can. And so I got to stick with things I know. And besides, I would never ever change my game engine in the middle of a game, anyways. So hope that helps. The, the that's the non lip sync version for you. Oh yeah, and you also asked how I learned how I learned to code. I learned from books 20 years ago, um, and I learned this book from this book called Learn C for Yourself. So I learned the C language first, and then I learned C++ later. And um, and but today I think there's a lot of great solutions out there. You can go. You don't have to necessarily read books. I would still recommend books, but you also have things like Code Academy and YouTube just to learn how to code. And there's so many great YouTube tutorials on how to create games with a certain game engine. In fact, I think it's more important to get familiar and comfortable with a game engine before you ever learn to code myself. That's that's my opinion. Nice. No, I do not use box 2D for collisions. It's it's kind of overkill. I use my own custom based game engine and it uses I use collision components. They're much they're more simple than Box 2D. And besides their 3D, I have I can have 3D collisions going on. And I can write my collision engine how I want, so I could use circles or whatever I wanted. And it doesn't have to like um I doesn't have to do all the complex things that Box 2D does with friction and all that. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> good one clock good one yes yeah 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 
Yeah, totally. You're not alone. I think people like us are more rare. It's like it's there's not that many people out there that use game engines where it's all open source like this, but there's some of us. Dude, this is so weird. So it's putting rubble in both, in multiple different places along the same Y. So it should be, it should only be putting rubble at the foot of the cliff here. That's my goal, right? But it's putting some rubble in multiple of these different. Why the heck is that? I'm going to turn on debug mode so we can see more. So weird. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Not like the Stone Age one. Okay, well, man, I guess there's one simple way I could do, I could fix this is just to reverse these loops. I don't know why the heck it's not working, but it is. So wait, 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 wait. If this is tile static and the tile below is none, continue. No, it's supposed to be the other way around. So, whatever, let's do it this way. <clears throat> uh, ah, who can fly? I'm using my own custom game, my own custom ECS, but I published it. I actually released it on, on GitHub. So, I built it for this game, and then I released it on GitHub. So, if you want to check it out, it's GitHub, Matt Weiss, Andy Fu. Oh, clock already answered it. There you go. Yeah, there's the link for it. <laughs> Quadratic wheels. Oh, man. Fourth Dimension. It makes me think of the Fourth Dimension app. Nano showed me that. Fourth Dimension app's pretty cool. There we go. All right, cool. We've got some rubble. And we still want to start with Y minus 1 or Y... Yeah, y equals y minus 1. Yeah, man. It's also been ported to C sharp. Somebody, no, wait, no. That was something else. Never mind. That was Valtry. Another thing I wrote for this game engine and published. So do we need to go y minus 2 for that? Hmm, weird.
Sweet. <laughs> nice, man. Uh, Lead man, this game is going to be on uh, Windows, Mac, Linux. It's first release on Steam. Um, that's going to be somewhere between, sometime between January and March. And um, then it's also coming out on iOS and Retro VGS later on that year. And um, maybe Android, Xbox One, and PlayStation, if the game can get enough pre-orders. So um, if you're into this game, you can pre-order it at songbringer.com slash pre-order. And all that goes towards funding um, Xbox One, Android, PlayStation, all that. That's cool, Vlad. Really cool. So cool. Was that you in the video? Oh, wait. So wherever this entity's position is. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got a better way to do this. I can get the entity's position. I can subtract it out from... Cool, cool. How much am I planning to charge? Some, somewhere between 16 and 20 bucks, something like that. You can pre-order it now and get it guaranteed for 16 bucks. Okay, so that time I put the rubble here. Um, and staggering upward nicely, but it's still off to the wrong X because of this thing's position. So I might as well, I might as well get in here and figure out what the heck it is. So I can set a breakpoint there. What's up, game? Cool. Okay, so I don't need this breakpoint here anymore. we go okay so the offset for that for this entity is 250 132 what's up professional novice what's up man hello Michael Myers what's up initial Raptor oh into Raptor sorry E pause. What's E pause? The entity's position is 330, 144, which is oh, about, yeah, so three quarters of the way through the screen. So O is currently 250, 132, and after this, it should be negative. Yeah, negative 80, negative 12. 
That should be right. Oh, unless... Oh, man. This is tricky. Am I happy with my progress? Yeah, I'm always happy with my progress. I guess I guess this whole part with this whole cliff face is going pretty slow, so that... You know. <laughs> whoa, man. Whoa, whoa! God, I'm just going so slow today, you know, like this this little simple thing creating some rubble at the bottom of this You know what? Maybe I'll just stop doing this and start with the art. Yeah, let's do that In fact I can go Let's go um, Let's create a rubble parent ID and the first time we create If I equals zero, rebel parent equals e dot id. Yes, yes, game. I'm using a custom entity component system. I built it for this game. I released it on GitHub. I just posted a link a second ago, but if you're interested in it, I'll post it again. Okay, so now we can do, let's do both sides anyways, even though it's not gonna be working all the way. And then, screw this e pause thing. And this is where we do rebel parent. Okay, like, you want me to post it or? Oh, okay, there, clock, clock posted it, thanks clock. Okay, now the rebel's not even working at all. It looks like it might be putting it up here to the right though. Yes, it's definitely one of those days. Yep. <laughs> oh, there. There we go. It's kind of working. You know what? So, this is so lame, but I'm just going to do subtract 2 from X, and I think that'll put the rebel in the right place. Even though this code is janky. At least it'll at least the rubble will be in the right place, and I can move on to the next thing where I've been on. I want to make this art all day, anyways. There. All right, cool. Let's add a tiny bit of Y. And we'll turn off debug mode. Yay! All right. So I've just been working pretty much the whole stream on getting rubble at the bottom of this cliff, and it looks great. At least there's rubble there for now. Um, the code is a bit janky, but yeah, that's okay. So the next thing I want to do is start making these cliffs look more like these rocks down here. So if I go to this screen, you can see that the bot, like the the face of the cliff or the face of these rocks, has sort of this sort of cool texture on it. And I want to kind of do something like that for this rock face or this whole cliff face here. And also I'm going to need to work on the top bit of it too. So this bit down here, up here, transitioning. So 
That's the goal for today. Get this whole rock face looking better. Ah, uh, graphics context. What's that? What do you mean by graphics contest or context? All right, okay, art mode. I'm putting away my mouse. I'm getting out of my graphics tablet. And we'll start, start drawing some stuff. Uh, no, the Raven just starts with you every time you start the game. So he's a secret. I'm not going to say exactly what he does because I get, people got mad at me last time I told I gave away the secret. But um, yeah, the Raven starts on every screen. And then when you scare him, he goes to a different screen. But he's, he's actually, he's not, he doesn't go to every single screen. So for example, if I go and scare him, he flies off. And now if I go to this next screen, see there's no Raven. But if I go over here, he might be on this one, or he might be south. Oh yeah, see he was east. So he, I scared him again, he moved his screen again. Um, he's probably not to the south. Yeah, he's not here. So he's going, you can tell he's going a certain place, right? He's going somewhere. So I just don't, I won't say where he's going exactly. Okay, all right, let's, let's do some pixel art. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, graphics context like bounds and frames. Oh, yeah. Ah. Well, like anything else in game development, I think everything kind of has a learning curve. You know, even the littlest things like, like, you know, like simple things with, with the game engines and stuff like graphics contests and stuff like that. So what you'll get, the more you get, the more you learn about it and the more you use your subconscious mind to kind of rest on it and use your subconscious to kind of learn while you're not actively consciously learning, you can really make progress that way. He's going back home. He has no home. He's got no home. Well, this is a big wall, so I got to start somewhere. I'm going to start with... This bottom bit here. So I want to do some, oh, what the heck happened there? Oh, that was weird. I need an 8-bit version of Surfing Bird. What's Surfing Bird? <laughs> I guess he kind of is in a way, but that might be giving away too much. Oh, it's a song. Is this it? The song? Or is this some like image of Surfing Bird? Oh, like Bird is the Word type bird? Oh, it's a song from the Family Guy. Ah. This is 93, 91, 87, brightness 36. Why did this show up like that? Oh yeah, that's the right color. Okay, never mind. Here, I'll put this down there. There, now I can draw on top of it. Well, good. Actually, I could put this one there. Call this one New Cliffs. Just start, start from scratch with all this.
Okay, I want to see something before I start. This, um... Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm looking at this actual, this corner right here as it blends into the stairs right here. So I like that how that curves there on the, this corner. I like how it curves on this corner too. So I'm going to leave that curve inside this texture, but maybe, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll just leave it exactly as it is. But I definitely need some shadow right beneath it. What's up, Sean? It's crazy. Yo, man. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. Even if you if you don't even invest in a graphics tablet, I think the first step would be watching tons of art, too. Like, I think a cool way to do it is to watch, like, tons of speed art on YouTube. You can watch speed people do speed pixel art or speed vector art, speed background art, character art, whatever. It's a really cool way to soak it all up before you ever even pick up a graphics pen or whatever. Okay, so now I've just got two basic colors. I want to see if these colors are looking well when I export and put it in the game. Like if they're about right. Oh, if I'm exporting here? What? There we go. Sheets, backgrounds. Hmm, okay. I guess those are the right colors. Alright, alright. Yeah, Twitch is kind of in... I think it's a bit... <laughs> Blame Twitch! I love blaming Twitch. It's all Twitch's fault. Hey, what's up, Alessandro? Welcome to the stream, man. Now I want my I want my granite texture. This is the original mock-up image I used to make this, start making this game. And inside this image I have this bit of texture which adds a granity look to everything. I 
I think I did it at about probably like 2% or something crazy, 8%. All right, that's what that was. So yeah, I'll put this down to 8%. And once again, I want to see if now that I have this texture on there, if this still looks good. Oh, yay, cool, speed art. Oh, man, YouTube and their ads. Yeah, exactly, right? This is the kind of stuff you start soaking this up. <laughs> cool. And you you start to realize things you don't even you don't even consciously know what you're realizing. But as you actually start doing art, when, once you finally pick up a pen and you start doing some fit, some art or whatever, you will know so much more than you think you know because you've watched somebody kind of do this process a lot of times. And I highly recommend doing this late at night before you go to bed, you know, because you'll your your subconscious mind will pick up on it and you'll you kind of will think about it as you sleep and you'll wake up. You you won't feel any different. You won't you won't actually you probably won't have increased your skill that much but you really will have soaked up the information and there's little things you don't even know what's going on here but you see how he just created something out of almost out of nothing he created this shading and this texture for this hair in a beautiful way and you start to learn the techniques of like okay that's how I would I I would also create some kind of thing look at this look how he's creating this blue right here first and then now he's putting in this darker blue to do this little shade and this lighter blue highlight too and he's see how he builds out this character this way. It's pretty cool. This is some great art here. Yeah, and then you just type in speed pixel art on YouTube or even the internet on Google or whatever, and you're gonna get so many, so many awesome videos. Okay, so I want to see if this, with this texture, it still looks good. Oh yeah, that's nice. Wow, that's better than I thought it would be. Sweet, awesome. Okay, so let's um, let's start adding this texture, like this color. I want to add some of these green. Oh, this almost looks like moss to me. I'm gonna add some green mossish, mossy stuff. Yes, I do. I, I do. Well, it both things are helpful, right? The speed painting when you're when you're not even when they're not even explaining it. You're getting it more on a subconscious level, so that's why I recommend doing it, especially at first when you have, when you know nothing about art. It's cool to watch an entire painting in speed time lapse because you soak up all of the process, right? It's almost like when they when you teach when you uh, if you've learned how to speed read, the first thing you do when you speed read is you actually read, you just flip through every page without even reading them all, and you kind of soak up the entire book first, and that's kind of what what speed watching speed painting does for you as an artist you, you soak it all up the entire process and then it's also really great once you've kind of both of them are helpful you know like if somebody's explaining what they do you're just going to get that information consciously and it'll take longer and slower but you'll get it more you should get it more concretely so is this texture a collision mask no it's not uh yame Mossy stuff. <laughs> yeah, let me show you what I mean. Uh, Yame. Um, if I turn on draw debug mode, it'll it'll show you all the red areas are collision boxes. See what I mean? All these red things are tiles that I cannot walk on. So the game actually creates these red tiles to um, for all the collision of the game. So no, it's not pixel perfect. 
but maybe it will be at some point. Just yet another thing to write. Okay, so I'm gonna add some of this moss, mossy stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome, man. Yeah, yeah, highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. It's um especially for especially if you're new to making art or if you've or if like um or if you don't have much time for art, you know, it's a beautiful way to to get some experience with art without even knowing you're really getting experience. Subconscious experience, which does count, makes a big difference. It did for me a lot. Like I, I did that for a whole year. I actually would watch people's art tutorials too. You know, actual when they're talking and stuff and explaining stuff. And man, I'm telling you, after a year of doing that, I went and actually picked up a pen and I was able to do stuff I never ever thought that I would because I understood the basic process. I understood how backgrounds were created, even though I didn't didn't know that I knew that. I did, which is just absorbing all that information. Okay, I want to make sure this is still looking good. Does it work with speed coding? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know whether it does, but um, it might. I think with speed coding, you, you would kind of have to understand the basic process. I don't know. Is there such a thing as speed coding? Yeah. Yeah, see, like that. That's the kind of learning I'm talking about, right? You just watch some English TV and you kind of pick up English. I do that with Chinese movies. I love watching Kung Fu. And I find that I've picked up a few words here and there. All right, cool. This is, um, yeah, I think this is looking good. There you go, Game Jam is speed coding, right. <laughs> what do I think of programs like RPG Maker and Game Maker? I think they're great. They're great for beginners. Yeah, and in fact, there's still, Game Maker has people making some professional quality games, like Hyperlight Drifter has been written in Game Maker, and some other really, like like Nuclear Throne, and some other ones are written with Game Maker, so... Um, I think this, if you, if you only learned game maker, you'd be in good hands. You would know a lot about how to make games. That, that's why I highly recommend it for beginners. Um, even experienced game developers can use game maker. That's what I'm saying. So it's a good game engine. And it's what's what, what, why I recommend it for beginners is because it's so user friendly. It's really easy to do stuff in it. What's bursary? Good for you, man. Uh, good. 
Cool. Oh, this is Tobor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've met Tobor. He's cool. Oh, wait, is this, is this recent? Did he just do this? No way. I think I might have missed it. I might have missed his Kickstarter. Oh, man. When did he do this? I come I can't see a date. Well, good for you, Matt. Oh, I'm so glad his Kickstarter succeeded. This is great. Right on. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Grant money. Nice, man. Cool, dude. Oh, I wish you all the best, Jonah. Oh, January. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I couldn't find that date. Oh, okay, so I didn't miss it. All right. Yeah, man. See how this is looking. Yeah, he's a cool guy too. Matt Fitzgerald's great, Tobor. Um, yeah, he's been on the stream a few times. I've been on his, I think I've, I've promoted his game a little bit. But yeah, his game looks really cool. If you, have, if you haven't seen it, definitely recommend checking that out. I think I want to do a like a overall. I want each one of these sections to be a tiny bit darker than the ones in front. Cool. Yeah. It's so cool to see you guys making games. Whoops. Uh, layer. Okay, so I'm going to make this. This little section here.
maybe 5% or something like that. Uh, DC Zell, I think you're asking about when the game's gonna be released. It's um, it's gonna be on Steam, January to March, something like that, and then it's also coming out on iOS, Retro VGS, and some other platforms too. Yeah, co-op mode is definitely gonna be in the game, and I'm gonna start out doing it really simple, where you're gonna be able to play as Jib if you're the second player, and you can scan items, and he's probably gonna have some tiny like minor stun attack or something like that too. Um, so it's still primarily a, a single player game, but you'll be able to play with a friend a little bit. Oh, no worries, man. You tap in with some cold thumbs or something? Or on, on mobile? I know how it feels. Sometimes I go hiking and I type things on my on my notes or whatever, and whenever I have cold thumbs, I'm all my I look at my notes later, I'm like, oh my god. What was I trying to say here? Uh, you want to play as the Raven? Oh, cool. Maybe there'll be a mode where you can control anything. Poo on people. That's all I want to do. That's what I'm born to do. I'm born to poo. Clock's born to poo. <laughs> uh... You need like a theme song. It's like Born to. Mm. How would Born to Poo the song sound? Whoops. Eight, four. There. I'm going to duplicate this one. Make it step three. Wait, what? Oh, it's because I had it selected. There, D3. Oh, there's already a video. There's already, dude, my theme song's already written, man. Oculus Rift Seagull test. Oh, the ads, dude, why are they making the ads? So much more prevalent. Yes, whoa. Dude, no way. <laughs> Look how big those bombs are. Oh, you wouldn't want to get hit with that. This is so great. What game is this? This should be a whole game. It's so great. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> oh, that's so great.
<laughs> New Flappy Bird confirmed. <laughs> yep. Ah, uh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> it is a flying cow. Oh. Poopy bird. Poopy bird, poopy cow. We don't know it yet, but these are going to be classic games one day. Alright, cool. Now I go apply all these layers to the layers before them so that it creates this sort of slight gradient as it goes backwards. Let's see how that looks now. Do I play games? Uh, yeah, I do, but I don't play as many games when I'm making games because I, I make this game all day long. And then by the time I'm done making the game, it's like I don't even really feel like playing games. But it's true, yeah. Some of my favorite games are on NES. The last, uh, the game I started playing late lately was Mystic Quest for the Game Boy. Actually, and it's really awesome. It's really taught me a lot because it's a it's a Zelda like game sort of, but it's more kind of like Final Fantasy almost. It's actually the precursor to the Secret of Mana series. And um, I love that. I love it. I love my old school 8-bit games. But also like new school games. I love like Sword and Sorcery and those kind of games today. Um, I love adventure games too. So. Yeah, this is looking great. That, just, that slight gradient really helps there. Let's see what it looks like up here on the top though. Yeah, that'll, that'll still work I guess. Okay, I'm going to continue on with the, the green moss. What's up, Gene? Welcome to the stream. What's my opinion on Pokemon? You know, I tell you the truth, I haven't ever played Pokemon. One of my friends tried to get me to play it once, and I just I didn't really like it. So, um, Or it didn't, it didn't catch with me. So, Yeah, Zelda's my all-time favorite. I love Zelda. The Zelda series and Metroid are my two favorite series. Zelda, Metroid, oh man, my favorite games. Oh yeah, the Might and Magic ones? Yeah, the, squ the squirrels totally, I haven't fixed them yet. <laughs> Squirrel for president! That's right. Castlevania for the Game Boy? No, I haven't. Is it good? Uh, I might play the new Zelda. I don't know. I haven't really liked the newest Zeldas for some reason. After, so I had this one Zelda moment that I actually did not like when I played Zelda when it was making me fish and I was like, I couldn't figure out how to make the it, myself, my character fish on the Wii. Oh man, I got so frustrated. I was like, I don't even want to play the Zelda. And I actually gave up on it. But that's because I was playing on a friend's computer or on a friend's Wii. So I didn't really I couldn't really play it again anyways. He was already he was already on like level six or whatever and, and 
hauling ass with it. So I guess um, the last real Zelda I played recently was, um, well, there was 64 and then Wind Waker. I played both those all the way. And then, yeah, so I really got to catch up on my Zelda. But I hear there's some really great Zeldas I haven't played yet on the Game Boy, which I've really got to try those too. Um, I heard they're really, really great. Yay. Yeah, that's one of the ideas. Cool, man. I gotta I gotta get that later. Actually, let me just post. I'm gonna remember to get Castlevania for the Game Boy because I'd love to play it. Oh, are you talking about Game Boy Advance? Oh yeah, Game Boy Advance. Cool. I've also heard um, Symphony of the Night is really great, and I wish I was able to. I wish I had the system to be able to play Symphony of the Night, but I I don't have the Sega or whatever it, it came out on. Not Sega. Was it Sega? Windbreaker's your fave. Nice. Oh, Tenchu. Yeah, I played Tenchu. Whoops. awesome yeah I haven't played this one but this is a series right oh yeah yeah Minish Cap yeah right that was your first console game? Well, Minish Cap's a good one. Um, personally, some of the games I'm excited to play, actually, I'm gonna just I'm gonna post some links here. These are rad. If you haven't heard of Axiom Verge, dude, I can't wait to play Axiom Verge. This is on my Steam wish list. This is a procedurally generated Metroid-like game, which looks hella awesome. So there's Axiom Verge. Check out some screenshots here. Um, yeah, this game looks amazing. Um, what else? Hyperlight Drifter. If you haven't heard of Hyperlight Drifter, Hyperlight Drifter looks super awesome. Oh, check it out! They finally got a release date. Yeah, Hyperlight Drifter is rad. This is their Kickstarter. Where's their page here? Artmachine.com. So these are these are some of the games I'm really looking forward to playing soon. Um, yeah, and the art style for Hyperlight Drifter is off the chain. Look at that, gorgeous. Um. Those are my two favorites, I guess. But I got there's a lot more like Children of Morta. I backed this game on Kickstarter, and oh, I'm looking forward to playing this one. What else? Oh, Megasphere. Megasphere looks rad. Yeah, yes it is. Hyperlight Drifters made in Game Maker. Yeah, Megasphere is so rad. His his art is just really really incredible. I noticed though he cheats with his art. He actually rotates his pixels, so like a pixel can't actually do that in a, on a console game or whatever. So he uses he uses a lot of like thirty two bit or sixty four bit techniques with his eight bit pixel art. 
So, but anyways, it's still great looking art. Do I prefer story or gameplay? Well, I guess it depends. Oh, Aider, of course, Aider. Yeah. If you haven't seen Aider. Aider the game. Oh my god, I forgot. Uh, this is definitely one of the, the, the tops on my list of games to play. Sort of like, it reminds me of Diablo, but pixel art and a lot of cool, you know, unique concepts. Wow, they really revamped their website. They got picked up by... Uh, Devolver Digital, so they they're actually being published by a, a top notch like like marketing team. But before they before they had uh, before they were on Devolver, they were just a two man team. So yeah, if you haven't seen Ader, man, check out Ader. It's rad. Chasm. What's up, the fan and lighter thief? Chasm, I think you mentioned that one before, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'd check this one out. This looks great, too. Yeah, it's always good to... I love plugging other people's games. Don't be a hater. Check out Hater. <laughs> What's up, you guys? Welcome to the stream. I'm working. This is day three, working on the, the cliffs. So I, I finally got all the mechanics for them working, and now I'm just I'm really finding all the graphics. Kind of I'm redoing them all because I didn't really like them before. So I'm kind of going for this technique, which well, it looks a lot like the uh, the other rocks that are already in the game. Oh yeah, Death Gambit for sure. Yeah, I think you put you told me about that one. Yeah, Death Gambit for sure. I gotta I gotta actually show this one because this is so good. They're published by um Oh Death Trash. We haven't seen Death Trash too. Death Trash looks really great. The guy that's that's making this game just started it, but um Death Gambit. Yeah, these guys are published by um um, Adult Swim, but their team is White Rabbit, and they also do a little bit of live streaming. Yeah. I know, <laughs> right? Yeah, Owlboy. Yeah, uh-huh. Whoa, this is some art I haven't seen yet. Sweet. Yeah, this is one I can't wait to play. I love it when he gets the that grappling hook and all that. They're at packs right now. Oh, see they're cheating with their pixel art too. Everybody cheats these days. I'm even cheating with my game. My game's supposed to be 8-bit, but it's it's got some 32-bit. Some 32 bit parts. It does. I admit it. Um, yeah, Death Gamut, Jump and Run. Well, I guess it's kind of an action RPG platformer, too. Yeah, I was talking about pixel art cheating, where 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 
you would have one pixel or whatever in your art, but it actually turns out to be eight pixels on the screen, and then you're actually doing some stuff which makes it so it's not actually no longer eight bit art purely, but <laughs> I definitely cheated the game. That's right, you gotta save some time. Can't be doing everything in real time. All right, cool. I'm liking this technique. This is looking cool. Maybe not so much this splattery dark texture. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of that. Yeah, it is. It is. To be purely 8-bit is difficult these days. How, how would you go about rotating stuff smoothly in pixel art? You'd have to, um, you can, well, you could anti-alias, but that typically looks bad with pixel art because your pixels are so big. But what you could do, um, yeah, definitely, definitely kills pixels. But what you can do is you can actually render your entire game to the a back buffer that's the size of your actual game what, what your what your game should actually be right and then your back buffer can just scale up so even if you're rotating stuff and doing all this crazy stuff with your pixel art it's all rendered down in this tiny little window and then you render that up and it's just the, the easiest way to make your game purely 8-bit and in fact I think that's the technique I'll probably end up using here with Songbringer um, I've just got to figure out how to do that with the GLFW window and all that Ah. Curses and Chaos? Oh, what's that one? Oh yeah. Oh, I saw this um I've been seeing this one on Twitter. Yeah, true. You could. Uh, would this not also be messed up when you bring it to the screen? What you talking about? Which one of the, what were you talking about? What's this? The other game before Death's Gambit? Oh, Death Trash? Yeah, Death Trash, the guy, he just started it. I think the better place to check out, maybe it's on here's blog here. But I'm just saying deathtrashgame.tumblr.com. Yeah, Death Trash looks great. This is made, I think it's also made by a single dude. He's from Germany. And I'm far... <laughs> He's a great artist. He's an incredibly great artist. So his whole game is like, he uses custom, like each of the screens is custom pixeled. Sort of story driven. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing this one. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I think the I think the easiest way to not cheat with that, the easiest way to not cheat at all on your pixel art is to just render it all to a tiny buffer, and then make and so all your effects, everything is essentially rendered down to the smallest buffer you can. I'm talking like 400 by 200 pixels max, and then you scale that up to whatever screen you're on, and then everything is perfectly pixeled, just like an old school consoler. Oops, okay, so I need to turn off all these touchy layers here. Yeah, I know, yeah. Extra foo, <laughs> like extra credits. Yeah, I know, man, I should. I'm definitely going to be playing this game a lot once it gets closer to its beta version. I'll be probably doing like, you know, at least a stream a week. I'll, I'll just play the game instead of developing the game so much. But um, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to playing some more games once I, once I finish this one. Yeah, totally. Yeah, when the when the Kickstarter succeeded, I did a celebration video. I actually played Zelda One, and that was really fun. Even though my my video got flagged by YouTube, they're like YouTube, YouTube flagged it for having copyrighted music in it because the music in Zelda is copyrighted. I'm like, what? Really? You can't play Zelda just because of the music? I mean, I can stream it. I just can't post. YouTube videos of it, but I did anyways. Oh yeah, it's there. I'm pretty sure it's in day, it was probably like day 120, I bet. 128, maybe. YouTube, my vids. Yeah, here it is. But it matched third party content, man. Ooh, you're, you're, you're devious if you watch it. <laughs> yes, yes, it was Drunk Zelda Day. Yeah, no, really, the, I was actually concerned about that at first, Jackal Gamer. I was like, man, are you sure, you guys? Can I actually play Ni Zelda and Nintendo? And people were like, yeah, you can do it. Go ahead. <laughs> and, and, but... Yeah, it was weird that it was weird that YouTube flagged me just for the music, not for actual Nintendo copyrights or whatever. But screw it, you know. You're gonna if you're gonna release a video every day, some of them are bound to be have some kind of weird copyrighted material you didn't even know. Like I played music on my phone one time. I didn't even think people could hear it on the stream, but that got flagged because they actually picked up through my laptop speakers recording. An actual phone that was like seven feet away was playing some music at a low volume and still YouTube's algorithm was able to detect that. Yes, yes, it did, game. That's how I'm actually doing this still full time. So I started this game working on it full time, right? For the first like four months, I just built it up to a level. I was preparing for the Kickstarter for a whole four months. Um, and... Uh, because I had no income, I still have no in actual income at this point. So I'm just I'm living off of Kickstarter funds to make this game. And so once again, thank you everybody that backed the Kickstarter. I really appreciate, man. Really appreciate you guys. A lot of the people that are watching the stream right now have already either backed on Kickstarter or pre-ordered the game. And so I'm really really excited to honor you guys by putting your name in the credits and also putting your name on the main menu.
right? <laughs> right? Really? Oh my god, that's crazy. Thanks, Yame. Yeah, I'm gonna re I'm gonna do a blog post soon. I've got it halfway written, but about how to do your own Kickstarter. So my advice on anyone that wants to do their own Kickstarter, which I highly recommend doing a Kickstarter, because first of all, you're gonna verify whether your game has merit, right? Whether people are gonna be interested in your game by doing a Kickstarter. If you if your Kickstarter fails, it's a probably a good sign, in my opinion, that maybe you need a better idea. Maybe you need to go back to the drawing board with that game, or maybe you just need to do a new game or something like that, but you definitely confirm, if your Kickstarter succeeds, you definitely confirm that your game probably has enough of a following that it is going to be a financial success or a, a game success in whatever terms you define that. Um, so, yeah, that's one reason to do a Kickstarter. Another reason, of course, is that you're going to get the funds you need to develop the game. Um, and another reason is that you build a following through it. So, like some of the people that, that don't necessarily follow the live stream, they're definitely more than down to back the game because they're excited to play the game but maybe they're too busy in their life or maybe they're not even interested in game development per se but they are interested in this game so it's a great way to build a following yeah for any project too it's not necessarily games that that, that you can fund through kickstarter and and stuff and and do all those things I just said, like build a following, verify that you do have, you are going to have an interest in your game and get the funding for your game. Not only that, but people on Kickstarter are amazing. Like you find, you find some people on the internet that are just total assholes, just dicks everywhere, especially on Steam. Like you put your game on Steam Greenlight, I guarantee you you're going to get some flack from people. No matter how good your game looks, people are just there to be assholes. I don't know what it is, but there's some trolls out there that are just horribly mean like like grade schooler mean you know what I mean um what they probably are a lot of them just grade schoolers so but anyways um on Kickstarter it's the exact opposite people are like positive people are say only good things and they're supportive and they're really really nice people it's it's really refreshing to put your art or your game or whatever it is you're making on Kickstarter and get all that kind of feedback because it'll just it'll fill you with tons of confidence. <laughs> Trolls, what's that? Yeah, but not a lot, not a lot. But it's it's the thing is, yeah, it probably is jealousy. But the thing is like Maybe maybe only two percent of the comments on Steam are, are like trolls that are really really mean. But it's that two percent that you can tend to focus on too much. You're like, oh my god, everybody was. You don't even think of the, about the ninety eight percent of people that were really nice and positive and awesome and excited for your game or whatever. But you focus on those that two percent of people too easily. There was a meatly about that. Some one of those meatlies. True, that's true. There's also a lot of awful games on Steam. So, that's like a, a, a brooding ground for trolls. Uh, yes, yes, I have played competitive games online. Um, I've played some League of Legends. I've played Dota. Um, I've played a little bit of Dota too. But especially this one for the iPad. I played um, Heroes of... This, uh, Heroes of... Heroes of Order and Chaos. That's what it's called. Yeah, I played a lot of Heroes in Order of Chaos. Actually, I got really good at Heroes of Order and Chaos. That one was pretty pretty good. It was a lot like League of Legends in ways. Pretty much they they pretty much copied League of Legends, but created their own characters. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Now I see what you're saying. Yeah. There's like a bajillion trolls on competitive games, right? Man, so true. And unless you're just like badass at the video game, you're definitely going to get trolled. Even if you are badass, you're going to get trolled. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kickstarter people care, and they're not, they have the money to care, too, and show that they care. Yeah, I know. I, I, almost, I, almost, I almost wish Steam would make it a little harder again for games to get on there, but they greenlight so many games and a lot, and really fast, too. They just, like... I guess I guess they have their reasons, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, trolls are just a myth. <laughs> nice. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's how that's how I I totally agree, man. Yep. Eventually it kinda all boils down to dollars. Dollars, dollars, dollars. Okay, this is this is it for for a minute. I'm actually gonna go and export this, and I want to focus on the top a little bit, the top bit of this piece of art, and make it look like it's blending well. And then I'm pretty much gonna be done with my stream because it's oh man, I've been two and a half hours already again, huh? Dude, I'm already over my time again. I got other plans tonight. But, okay, yeah, I'll do a little bit more, though. I'll do 10 more minutes of streaming just to try and get this top bit of this wall to look good. What's that? Really? Whoa. Interesting. Wow. Parag, what are you asking about? What's that? Yeah, oh yeah, this is looking so much better than the old the old one. But I still want to see this transition look better. So maybe this whole wall needs to be a little bit lighter to start with. But yeah, so let me let me go up to the top here and we'll see how this is looking. Okay, yeah, I want to do a little bit of work just to see if I can get this to look better up here, this transition. So I'm going to save the game here. Wow, that's so weird. They're going to get rid of green light? Oh man, I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that at all, man. I wish they made green light harder, or, or maybe they'll make it more difficult for people to get games on. I don't know. I'd rather see higher quality games on Steam than than a lot of these low quality games that are coming out. Okay, so first thing, I had a shading layer. Let's put that back in. And I'm gonna make it the right color. Oh, good. Okay, so they're actually going to have it curated by a human being. That would be awesome. Oh, wow. Thanks, Yaim. Man, this is big news here. Huh. Wow. Hey, I got to soak up this article and see what it's going to mean for game devs, because, I don't know, green lights... 
I thought Greenlight was kind of cool in the sense that, first of all, you could kind of build a little bit of following for your game. You know, it's a good way to get some exposure for your game. Um, secondly, is good a good way for indies to get attention for their game because um, when you put your game on Steam Greenlight, you tend to get some attention from the press. And thirdly, it was kind of like a you know a difficult thing to to complete well so that you'd get some people that you know it was just it was just you would you would filter out some of the trash some of the some of the games that are just like you know not very high quality at all okay i think this is just a little bit too dark to start with that little that little dark shadow there So yeah, yeah, this is right. This the self fueling indie market. That's the part I don't want them to lose. I hope they, I hope they do this right. Sixty-one percent. We'll start there. Maybe even. Oh, maybe I'll do um, um, a bit of blur there, Gaussian blur. Oh uh, yeah, that that almost works. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Crimson. My thoughts exactly. This is that's what I'm saying. Greenlight is great for indie developers. I hope they I hope they can still keep that awesomeness cuz my game wouldn't be where it is today without Greenlight, you know? That's what got a lot of articles written about. I guess doing the Kickstarter as well. Kickstarter really really will get you some attention. But um from the press, I mean but uh, yeah, Greenlight really helped too because I know that Kotaku, for example, wrote about my game because of Greenlight. So, you know, what's that mean for any game developers? Hopefully, they keep some of that awesomeness. All right, that's looking okay, but it's almost too crisp. Hmm. That edge right there is just a bit too, oh, what if I, uh, I could add a highlight or a shadow built into the top there. What do I have the most experience for? I guess mobile. Yeah, I guess so. Yes, I highly agree. Green light right now. Right now, green light is too easy. When it started out, green light was, I think, the right difficulty, though. They had it right. Oh yeah, some cracks. Yeah, some cracks would be good. I want to try something really quick with, uh, yeah, I'll definitely do some cracks, but I want to do a little, I want to try some shadow. Make sure this still works if I change the height of this image though. Okay, no, oh, I broke it. Okay, well, let's do the cracks then. <laughs> All right, yeah, do some more cracks. Uh, 
right. Oh, wow. Did not even know that was in there. I want to let me merge these. Why? Well, come on, merge. Maybe it's all this. Hmm. Yeah. Secret engines, nice. What? At least the cracks. Yeah, totally. Okay, so now I should be able to erase this and create some cracks much more easily. There, yay! Okay, I'm just gonna go wild at first here and create some really crazy wild cracks to see if this is even gonna, you know, if, the, if any of these techniques look better than the other. So I'll just like, you know, do some randomness here. Really? Oh man, that would be cool. Oh, oh, oh. Nice, man. What's up, phone? Welcome to the stream, man. That's great. Oh, HTML5 would be sweet, right? Okay, this is good enough to see if these any of these techniques are looking better than the others. Cause I do gotta get going. I've been streaming for a long time already. So yeah, this is probably gonna be it for today's stream. I'm just gonna run the game one last time. See how this is looking. And tonight I'll be I'll, I'll finish this up so I'm finally done with these cliffs because I'm like kinda over it now. Okay, so yeah, I'm it looks like if I am gonna use this technique, I can't overuse this technique because there's definitely too many cracks now. And I probably need to put some kind of like shadow built into the crack so it looks like the dirt is sort of like sloping off and getting to be a, a darker actually let's try that really quick i'll try some some dark color on there right i wish i could have done something like that but no you guys don't even know how expensive it is where i live california you can't buy stuff on a game developer's budget unless you're a famous game developer One day, maybe I will be, but we'll see. So I'm going to put in some shading. Let's try here in this shading layer. Or maybe not, just do a new layer. See how this looks. 
Yeah, the player shadow should definitely not be on top of it too. I need to do that with. I need to do some kind of mask layer for those shadows because I have, I need it. Also needs to work that way for the sky. There's a lot of sky tiles that don't definitely shouldn't have shadow on them. Right? Make more sense if you draw the cracks in dark the other way up. Like you mean draw some dark cracks coming up towards those cracks? Like uh like if I were to go these cliffs. And I were to draw like a crack like this sort of going into this crack. Is that what you mean, Lighter Thief? Okay, let's see how that looks. Thanks, BLR. Am I am I not gonna change the ground? What do you mean? Okay, that shading is way too dark, but that it does make a lot more sense to see that crack building up to it. It's the build up crack. So if I put that down to like maybe 20, 15, something like that, that should look a lot better. Oh man, it's break time. Oh yeah, yeah, that's definitely looking better. I like seeing a little bit of this dark, this ground here in, sh in shadow. It would definitely help a lot to not see the player's shadow on top of this cliff. That would make it look way the heck more 3D. Because right now it makes it look 2D and flat to see the player's shadow on top of it. So that's that's pretty much one of the most important parts of this whole this whole technique right there. But then yeah, I, I love that. Good suggestion, Lighter Thief, to see the crack building up there. That totally works. So yeah, I'll keep on working on this technique tonight. And um that's it for today's stream, you guys. Thanks for watching. Oh, make the ground more rocky. Oh yeah, I can make I can make that transition look better by making it more rocky-ish as it gets closer to that. Yeah, uh, save for web. Um, I don't know. I just click save for web and I click save, and then you just you don't you don't have an option to choose where to save stuff. Sorry about that. I wish I could help you more, but I I looks like I I just click the save button and it's this allows me to choose whatever folder. Oh, Vlad, 